Attention, attention. Pop surgeons Eric and Stacy, please report to operating room one. Pop surgeons Eric and Stacy, please report to operating room one. Surgery is about to begin. It's Poperation. I'm Stacy. I'm Eric. It's been 20 years, Eric. 20, year, 20 years ago was a simpler time. 1998. Before smartphones, <laughs> before binging, before goop. We didn't yes. have goop. Why we do you have, bring up goop? We didn't have goop. Yeah. Uh, because we're talking about Gwyneth. We are talking about one of Gwyneth's shows. And it's kind of, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of movies that you go, oh yeah, 20 years, that's about right. Sliding Doors shocks the hell out of me that it's 20 years old. I know. I just, I, that, I was I was in my, well, you know, I was I'm in my late 20s. I'm watching it and my daughter is going, oh my God, Gwyneth looks so young. And I'm thinking, oh, you know her from Iron Man. Yeah. So, yeah, but I'm sitting there going, yeah, she looks, oh, right, it's 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, but that's how I, but honestly, that this is kind of how I picture Gwyneth, this and Emma, you know, yeah. when she was young, you know, exactly. doing that stuff. That's yeah. how um, Gwyneth is in my head, which I'm sure she'd be thrilled. <laughs> I'm not thinking about her now. <laughs> so Sliding Doors, it's not a movie that everybody's seen. No. But I do feel, I think, I think it's a really good movie and I think people should see it. And uh, I, I for for several reasons. Yeah, I watched it a couple days ago. I hadn't seen it in twenty years because mm-hmm. I saw mm-hmm. it in the theater when it came out, and I I had not seen it since. Um, I you know I remember the basic plot, which there's this. I, I have to say it was kind of. I think it had it been made today, they would have made that the sequence of the splitting of the two lives maybe a little bit more sophisticated. The whole thing where they run the film backwards and she's running up the stairs, but backwards, that was a little odd. But basically what this movie's about is Gwyneth Paltrow plays someone who's already having a really shitty day. And she runs – and she's she's uh, she's British, by the way, in this. Takes place lovely, in London. Lovely British accent. So she's running down the stairs to, in the London tube to catch a train. And you kind of see how in one reality she squeaks through the door and in the other reality she's left on the platform. And that one tiny change – makes such a huge difference in her life because the the one who got in the train gets home earlier and, and catches her two-timing boyfriend with another woman. The one who does not, does not get that piece of information, so ends up staying with him for a much longer time. And then all the ways that life just kind of that one, it's it all basically, pounds on each other. You know, we've all said, we've had these moments where if I had only fill in the blank, you know, yep. made a different decision at this particular time, and this is what this movie just starts takes a deep dive in for yeah. this particular woman at this particular moment and it is it starts out though she you we see her getting to work but getting to work late yes and then getting fired immediately yeah and that starts a every asshole she's of, the only woman in the room yep and, and it's 1998, all, so yeah. the, the misogyny was clearly big and in and, yeah. and, and, and Britain. And she's working in PR, which is advertising adjacent, so there's still that Mad Men culture kind of going Correct. on. Correct. And, uh, and, the, and the PR thing is important to know because that comes into play later uh, in one of the lives. Well, both of the lives eventually. Yeah. But, yeah. but it was – so it's Gwyneth Paltrow is, yeah. is the ingenue, the protagonist. But so is John Hanna. Yeah. Now, this lovely Scottish bro. Do you know, just... you know, John Hanna, people might know him from Four Weddings and a Funeral. Uh-huh. He was the gay, the young gay guy who did the eulogy at his older. For Simon Callow. Oh, my yes. gosh. Which and everybody, lovely. everybody, that, that stole the show. Yeah. I remember after seeing Four Weddings and a Funeral, I didn't know him from Adam. Yeah. But that was all everybody talked about. Oh, my God, the eulogy. Because that's what makes you cry like yeah. a mother effer. It's true. The joke about, about Four Weddings and a Funeral in my community was like, you know, well, if gays could get married, it had just been five weddings and we could have had a better time. Um, but, you know, gays couldn't get married at the time. So the gay had to have the funeral instead of the wedding. So uh, <laughs> so that somebody could give a eulogy as opposed to a wedding toast. Um, I still think you would have had to have, have to a funeral. Tragic. But it might not have been a gay guy who died. Well, I, I but know. I also felt like – and I, okay – 
you know, I don't know. He died because he was old and had a heart condition. I get that he was the gay one, and you could have made it a straight guy who was gay. You who could had have, a heart but like condition. the gays are always tragic. Not to go down that whole road, but it's like you know, oh, four happy occasions and then a tragic gay funeral. <laughs> Thanks. But you're right. John but you're Hanna's funnier. Eulogy was we are funnier, even at our funerals. Even at your not funeral. this one. Um, it was John a, Hanna. Yeah. That, that was that was probably that was, his finest moment in film. And it was, but that was the first time I ever heard of him. And then I saw him in the Mummy. Never saw it with uh, Brendan Fraser. Okay, he was he would play the brother. He played the funny. He was the comic relief in that, okay. and he was hysterical. I enjoy that movie, The Mummy, but we, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about sliding doors. This was completely different. He's straight, yep. and he's the hero. Yep. And I had and never. He's charming. He's oh lovely. my god, is he charming? Yeah. He actually is the one who got this movie funded. Interesting. Say yeah. more about that. Yeah. Well, um, and I'm jumping all over. Now, if I'm going to this part, no, he um, he got it funded by getting it in front of Sidney Pollack. Uh huh. Because it was uh, John Howitt, who's the director, but he also wrote it. He had this idea and um, couldn't get funding. John Hanna, he got John Hanna on mm-hmm. it. John Hanna knew somebody who knew Sidney, and they got that way. And Sidney was one of the executive producers of this movie. Okay. And so he really, really helped to get it going he got yeah. funding for it big time and then he was like a consultant mm-hmm. on you know different aspects of it which made it yes there were some parts that you're talking about where it felt kind of like a tv movie yeah. <laughs> because of you know you felt like oh you had no money but at the same time <laughs> there were parts it could have been worse so you feel like there yeah. were a lot of very professional you feel like somebody gave you good advice on yeah. this and i felt it was that was a directing move but it also may have been a, an expense move uh-huh. you know we we can't do anything because we don't have the money but yeah. we can make this film go backwards yeah um but Anyway, so John helped get it there, but also, so who else is in it? Like, there's four main characters, uh-huh. five if you count the best friend, who is really, really good. But I I'm, liked her a lot. I'm going to go with four. John Lynch plays the boyfriend, the cheating boyfriend, yeah. and then who plays his, his girlfriend is Jean Triplehorn. She's always the other woman. She is usually the like. other woman that you don't like. She's an American. And in theory, this is the only American accent you hear yeah. in this movie because Gwyneth is British all the way. And we know she can do it. She does it She really does good. a fine British accent. I, I never forgot. It's funny. At one point, Jean Triplehorn describes Gwyneth as, you know, attractive in that British horsey kind of way. And I'm like, okay, A, that's just a bitchy thing to say so we hate you even more now but also um Gwyneth's totally American so whatever <laughs> <laughs> and she's not really and and I get what the line about being horsey I get that but there's another kind of British which like you know Princess Diana I would never have described her as that British horsey way but no. she was that British English rose kind of thing sure. and I feel like if you're going to describe Grant if it would have been toward the English rose okay. you know something like that if you're I mean if you're going to go for a cliche sure. a British cliche well, it doesn't look she's not horsey no. her face isn't long enough no that's what I'm Speaking, def- bringing us back to you that's know, what I'm four talking about right now horse yeah. face. Um, we, okay four weddings and a funeral that's another conversation because I have some major <laughs> thoughts about that let's not start that down this road I have major thoughts and and, and about Americans in four we- weddings uh, and a funeral yeah, okay, okay well, or that's, whatever that, save that for another time I'll say that for but another yeah, time yeah you know it's interesting that, that this had so many American touches not only Sidney Pollock which I was not aware that he was involved to that extent but just yeah. Gwyneth being there I kind of uh, halfway through I was thinking about this going is there another American actress who has played so famously so many British people? Because between this and Emma, you know, moviegoers could be, you know, I, I would understand if they mistakenly thought that she was British. Correct. She no, you're right. Not only as British people, but in what seemed like British films. Because this felt like a British film. It never leaves London. Well, Renee Zellweger played Bridget in three movies. That's true. So it's one character. But, but I, I, here's what I'm going to say to you. It's kind of – and I feel this way, the opposite too, is that I don't know – I feel <laughs> – I feel like there are enough British actresses that you could have found one sure. for the price you're paying. Yeah. You know, with Sidney Pollack as your executive producer yeah. that you could have done – you didn't You didn't have to import. And I feel that about American movies too. You, do, you have – there are a lot of good yeah. American actresses you don't have to import. 
Kate I, Winslet re- just played American in the latest Woody Allen thing. She plays this Coney Island housewife, you know, and her accent is spot on. No, Kate, and Kate is a wonderful actress. I adore her, but I just, it's just weird to me. You know, I get why Kate would do it. You want to stretch. I get why Gwyneth wanted to do this. You sure. want to, you want to, you want to say, can I do, can I pull it off? Renee, Renee Zellweger. I get why the actors do it, uh-huh. but why the producers are saying, yeah, let's do that. I, I, and I found it weird with Bridget. Jones. I was always aware it was an American doing a British or trying See, a British accent. I, and that's I, the same with this. Yeah. I, I found it less in Bridget Jones than I found in this one. And not because Gwyneth's accent is bad. It's just because she's so ubiquitous. And I'm such a huge fan of Gwyneth's mom. Blythe Danner. Yes. Who is, you know, I love everything she's ever she done. She is class personified. And I, just, and I just also know that she's American, you know. Well, everything she's oh, ever yeah. done except for that prescription drug commercial she does now. I could I could live without that, Blythe. Yeah, I, that was a weird choice because also they've done weird things with her face. Have you noticed when she's walking <laughs> around? It looks weird. It's like they. It's she doesn't look like herself. Yeah, it's either soft lenses or she's it's got something It's Vaseline on the yeah. screen, man. It is not right. It is not right. Sorry. Sorry, Blythe. Um, <laughs> Blythe. Hashtag make better choices. Um, Because she's listening. She's listening. Of course she is. She's a huge fan. Uh, So anyway, so so those are the big four. And also, I do want to shout out to John Lynch, who plays. Watching it again, he is truly the biggest shit given. He is awful. He is awful. He's a terrible person. And yet, I believed him. Because I'm like, I have seen guys do this. I've seen guys say, this is so typical. He would try to turn, you know, she'd come in and and say, why was there a a glass in the laundry basket? Yeah. And he's like... What, what, why are you accusing me? Suddenly you're accusing me. Yeah, it's my, you know, and he goes on the defense, on the offensive yeah. and defensive at the same time. And, and so she backs down because that's what women do. We're mm-hmm. like, okay, never mind. Didn't want to get your panties yeah. in a wad. It was, it was so, for me, it was perfectly written, his character. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, okay, so last week um, or a couple weeks ago, we talked about the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Mm-hmm. And an actor who was just like also playing a horrible person, but somehow we didn't get. I got it with this guy. Bad '90s haircut aside. Yeah, what are you gonna do? It was '98. It was '98, but he was a good-looking guy, and there were moments of charm, and there were moments of you know, of course, he just wanted to get her out of the apartment before she noticed any more clues of his indiscretion. Right. But in order to do that, he was like, "I'm gonna go buy. You just lost your job, you poor thing, and you just hit your head. I am mm-hmm. going to." go get you completely shit faced and we're gonna go out for a great meal and I'm gonna take such good care of you and you could just see her kinda of go, Oh God, thank you. You're yeah. such a great boyfriend. And I got it. Like I got it with her. I, totally I wanted believed. her to leave because we know that he's yes. horrible. But you don't but but here's the deal. If you didn't know that he had been cheating on her, you would have believed him. Yeah. Whereas, as we were talking about in Mrs. Maisel, we weren't completely convinced that yeah. we would have ever gone on a second date with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but this guy, and he's an artist, so there are women who really like the artist type. And yeah, so he was, novelist. you're my muse yes. kind of bullshit. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so he, I just wanted to say, he did a really, really good job. And I appreciated Gene Triplehorn, too. I The writing maybe could have been a little less black and white. Oh, she's an American. But they do that. Brits will write Americans just so they have the biggest, baddest bitch that they can. See, I've I, seen that more often than not. It's interesting. The story I made up is who can we get? We want to, you know, we, we can't have someone who expects to be above the title, but we want someone who's enough of a name that people will come to see this show. And now that you just told me that Sidney Pollack was part of what's going on, of course, his network includes a lot of American actors. And part of it is like, we got Gene Triplehorn. Well, we'll just make the character an American. That's kind of the story I made up is, ooh, they got Jean Triplehorn. Does she want to do the accent? Not really. Well, we'll just make her an American. And well, and, and they could have done that. I will say that the reason that they did say that – the because this – she plays his ex-girlfriend uh-huh. who's trying to get him back. Yep. And the reason they were ex is that she left to go back to America. Yep. And he couldn't afford a ticket to visit her. So that's the idea. Granted, she could have been from anywhere. You're exactly right. Yep. And that may be how it ended up. What I do appreciate, which again, I'm going to, to – I'm talking about four weddings and a funeral and i didn't mean to the difference between writing for americans and writing for brits is it's huge especially to anybody with an ear because this was clearly the lines that gene said 
it was it was how an American would say them. Yeah. And my problem with Andy McDowell and Four Weddings and a Funeral, it was written for a Brit. They got Andy McDowell and then they didn't change a damn word. She said lovely way too much. She said shit that should not have come out of her mouth. And even with a good actress, what? <laughs> it wouldn't have been believable. Okay, Andy was fabulous in Sex, Lies, and Videotape. And I was she was by great that. in that. But, but I think that was a director. Back to Sliding Doors. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm sure they probably just told Gene, you know, say the lines as you want to say them. We're changing the nationality of it. So if it sounds too British, just say it the way you want to say it. And she was fine. Um, and, and again, she got in that line. Was, she's attractive in that British horsey kind of way, mm-hmm. which was funny. It's funny. Give her that. It I just... hated her. I hated Lydia. She was awful. But, and they, but they, I, they literally gave her no redeeming value. She no. didn't even drive off slowly. I get, you know, there, there was, I, I, I disagree. There was this one moment when she was making a whole bunch of noise. She'd stubbed her toe. And, and and John Lynch was on the phone with Helen. Yes, Gwyneth, with Gwyneth, yeah. And was trying to tell her to shut up. And mm-hmm. he's like, what are you trying to do? And she just stood up and says, I'm trying to get you back, you idiot. Yeah. You know, and in that moment, I did kind of feel for her. It's like, you know, here she is. She doesn't want to be the other woman. She wants to be the woman. What I liked she about that. She wants to be the girlfriend. What I liked about that moment was that she was sitting there and you did. You thought what he thought, that she was trying to make noise so that his girlfriend on the phone would hear her. You thought that that was going on on and so she's sitting there being really really loud going oh my toe my toe my toe and then when he says what are you trying to do she was able to believably in my mind suddenly stop that and say i'm trying to be your girlfriend in a way that i went oh my god that was her real feeling yeah i mean that was a good that was good acting that was a moment that i went that's how you do that transition yeah because it could there was there was no words in there that would have helped that was acting that was pure acting and i was i liked that a lot so this is an example the both of them about how to play horrible people but really give a good performance yes yes because you can give a good performance playing a horrible person, or you can just be mealy mouthed and weak and weenie, and you just get off the screen. Well, I think a lot of it is is some of it is is what kind of an actor you are, and if you're a good actor, you realize that you don't play the emotion or the actions; you play the character, and you also you can't judge your character. You can't say I'm a bad guy, so I'm going to be bad. You have to. You, no, no bad guy really thinks they're the bad guy in their own movie. No. You, they think they're the hero of the show. No, and and so that's how you. She didn't think she was a bad person. Um, she was just going for what she thought was true to her heart. He didn't think he was a bad person. He was an he felt like he was in a bad situation and he was trying to juggle things and he was mealy and he had a lot of issues. Well, but, his best friend, who I also love oh my God. all the time, told him he was a bad person. Yes, to his he face, did. And he you're did. an awful person. And all so he I, did was laugh. So, he was yeah. great. <laughs> so I think John Lynch's character, Jerry, Jerry yeah. knew he was a bad person. He knew he was doing bad things. He knew he was doing bad things. He didn't think he was a bad person. But he felt stuck he, and he in felt, this bad yeah. situation. And he felt guilty. Yeah, so... Basically, we haven't even hit on what this movie's really about, which is right. that whole alternate life. What we'll if, get to that in a da, minute. Da, da, da. We're gonna we're gonna yep. take a quick break, yep. and then we're gonna come back and really get into that whole piece of sliding doors, which is really the whole marketing. Yeah, why push. was it made? Yeah, so you know what? What if what if you caught that train? What if I had moved to New York? Okay, well, you said we're gonna talk about it in a break, and you're talking about it now. Uh, well, we're gonna take a break, and then we're gonna talk about it. So this, to me, is about what ifs. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of movies have done that whole what if thing, and uh, but not in this way. And I think that that may be what intrigued a lot of people. I don't know. It wasn't a huge, huge hit, but it wasn't a stinker. It wasn't yeah. a bomb. This was not a sci-fi movie. Oh, right, 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 right. You know, and so usually when you do that alternate reality, it feels like a time travel kind of thing, you know. We've seen a lot of movies that kind of – well, one called – a bad movie called The Butterfly Effect. But then other movies that do the same thing. You go back in time and you change one little thing and it changes all of reality. This just tells you about two different realities that are happening at once. Right. Where she goes and she misses the the train and then all of a sudden the film goes backwards. Mm Mm-hmm. Like that. It really did. Like it that? actually, and it was that, it was actually a sound effect. It was a little cheap. It was a little cheap. Okay. But 
then she comes back and you see her both miss the train and catch the train. And then for a little while, it's very quick cuts in between these two realities. They make the girl who missed the train hit her head so we can tell see, right away that, you know, the one who's got a big bandage on her head is the one who missed the train. So it was easier right. to Right, so you were able track. to tell who she was in which scene. Yeah. And then she got a haircut, so it was much easier. Yeah, the other one got a haircut. So, right. you know, I felt this movie had a lot to say about blondes. And blondes having a lot more fun. You're an idiot. No, it had nothing to do with about blondes. It was only, I will tell you this, though, I sat there and went, oh, thank God, she looks better as a blonde. I just thought blonde Gwyneth throughout, you know, not only did she leave her cretinous boyfriend, she got out of that. She was leading a much better life. She totally was leading. And, and I think that was that was part of the, the you know, and we've talked about uh, Ms. Maisel uh, being a coming of age. That's what this was as well. But one, if she made the train, she started her coming of age more slowly Mm -hmm. than she did when she didn't make the train. Suddenly she was forced to make some decisions. And, you know, so her maturing or whatever you want to call it, coming Mm -hmm. of age started happening faster so that. And I but I think the question for me, the question that this was asking is. Because we do, we say, if I'd only done blah, 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 my yeah. life would have been so different. It would have been better. I mean, that's usually the idea is that if I hadn't or if I had done this, then things would be better. And this is what is answering that question. Would they indeed have been better? And, and during most of the movie, and, and I, I guess we're not going to spoil it, but during most of the movie, you have decided that one of the decisions – was a better it was you know one yeah. of the options was a better of options to have happened yeah yeah um, who, Helen who caught the train was having a much better life she exactly and so and 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 so you were you were you wondered when Helen who no 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 Helen who caught the train uh-huh. was having the worst life Helen who didn't catch the train wait a minute Helen, who caught the train, caught Jerry at home. Right, right. Away. right. She, I'm sorry, became okay. blonde, got into. Gotcha. A relationship okay, with John so Harry, is me, Helen, who life. caught the train, was we were, you know, we were, we were seeing her advance. Uh-huh. Whereas we're sitting here with Helen, who didn't catch the train, going, "When is she going to?" Yeah. You kept waiting for her, and and that was a fun part of those scenes is that he would get caught, so almost caught, so mm-hmm. many times, yeah. and you're really just waiting for that yeah. next thing. But I really did see, you know, Helen who caught the train was blonde perky Helen and Helen who didn't catch the train I I remember her as mousy brunette Helen mostly mousy not because she's unattractive but because she looked looked down in the dumps all the time she was very unhappy well I think the the color of her hair was a mousy brown and I think that was on purpose because it was just just drab brown blunt cut bangs you know long straight cut and she wore it in a ponytail or whatever it was just very you know whereas the blonde one when she got it cut and went blonde it was a sassy 1990s cut and it looked adorable very cute but again you know she was cutting I, I, i think there was symbolism in that she was you know changing in her brain of yeah. how she was going to go about life and she was doing it on the outside too. Yeah. Whereas the other one wasn't changing anything. She was just trying to, to yeah. survive. Sure. And so her hair and everything stayed the same. So the, the, my main flaw with this movie is kind of coming clear to me as we're having this conversation. Okay. And that really is, I liked it. I liked the movie. I was very entertained. Very little happens because Gwyneth though actually made a choice. You kind of said the word choice. And the fact is she missed the train or didn't miss the train. She was trying to catch the train. And that was not a choice. You were correct. That was and just an option. Happenstance. And it's not a choice that she caught her boyfriend having sex with Jean Turtle Horn. She just walked in at that time. She didn't make a choice. To, I mean, she made some choices as far as, you know, get the hell out of my life and I'm moving in with my best friend. But then even her best friend said, get a haircut. And then even John Hanna said, you really ought to open your own company. Do you think I could? I mean, there's just she's, – she's very passive. Even in, in both realities, she's kind of a passive character. And part of it kind of says to me, you know, life happens and we don't have a lot of control. I mean, if that's what the movie's trying to kind of get across is that life kind of happens to you and you don't have that much control. A, I agree with that because, you know, I can make a lot of choices, but a lot of things are also going to happen. There are external circumstances that kind of drive that. And it just it's it's a more interesting movie some of the time when your protagonist actually makes a pretty bold choice and kind of goes with that. Um, 
regarding her personality, I, I do kind of agree, but I will say this, it was consistent in both characters. Sure. I never felt like she was behaving out of character or that suddenly now that she has a blonde, sassy do, she's got a better attitude. You know, she's she didn't become more aggressive necessarily. And you're right. Certainly not by choice. It was by she had to. Yeah. But at the same time, our experiences mold who we are sure. and how we choose to go on. Yeah. And so, yeah, her friend said, did suggest, why don't you get a haircut? Well, OK. Do I think that she wouldn't have gotten one if her friend hadn't said that? No, I don't know that that's true. But we just happened to be in the scene when that happened. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It, it's and the haircut's not the most, uh, not the most, you know, the biggest choice. The much bigger choice was blonde, sassy Helen opened her own PR firm after right. being fired. Whereas mousy brunette Helen just waited tables and delivered sandwiches for right. what seemed like for fucking ever. Well, also here's and, and I'm talking that my daughters watched the, the movie with me. Here's also blonde sassy when she caught okay <laughs> that's just her name. That's her name now. Blonde sassy after she caught the boyfriend, she went and she moved in with her friend p- possibly with rent free for a while. Yeah. Whereas uh non Brown, you know, brown mousy, <laughs> who didn't catch her boyfriend, was still living with him. Yep. He's out of work. He's writing this novel, which uh-huh. obviously doesn't happen. And so somebody has to make money. So she had to work. She didn't have the luxury of a friend who's letting her spend the night in her house. Yep. So she had to work and had to take something. So I think the difference there was opportunity. Uh-huh. But I also think that's what this movie is about, is that we have all of these what if moments yep. all the time. Yeah. Do, will you get a better life? Maybe, maybe for a while, but that doesn't mean that the other, you know, the other choices won't come around because I think that one took her to a place really quickly. One option, Uh the other option, it took her to a place, but it took a, a, you know, a winding route and took longer to get there. But I, I think that's what I felt like the thing was, is that you make all these choices and sometimes it's really obvious that that was a great, you know, that this is this you've got good stuff happening mm-hmm. for you. And you go, oh, if only because now I'm stuck doing all of this bad stuff. But at the end, there still might be a come around. Does that yeah. make sense? So I, that's how I, I felt that that was what this was saying, that all options can still have a good ending kind of thing. Yeah. But also all options are going to have bad things happen as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what that's kind of how. I yeah, think. I think I just as I'm thinking back about the movie, I think it might have just been a little stronger had, you know, Gwyneth, who'd just been fired, decided, let me just dip into this coffee shop and just have a cup of coffee or something. But one Gwyneth said, I'm suspicious of my boyfriend. I want to know what's going on. And the other just said, oh, you're overreacting and made a choice to go back to the apartment or not. There just would have been something about that, that, that a different choice that you made in your life is what made all the difference as opposed to just this random occurrence where you got the train or didn't. That's true. It's and a I, slight thing. And, but it and, just, it, and that's it a different – maybe that's a different movie. Maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe the, the choice thing is different from the option thing. Because while our external lives also have an effect on us and make us who we are, our choices have a huge impact on – you know, that, that really is Correct. who you are. So that's a different Helen. But I a also think it's a different Helen movie. That I think it's yeah. a different movie because Perhaps. this was about just happenstance. This is yep. about dumb luck. Is, is the little girl with the doll going to get in your way and thus preventing you from getting the train? Yep. Or is her mother going to pull her out of the way and yep. thus you get to the train on time? I mean, that's – that shit happens all the time. That's that butterfly thing. Yeah, it does. And, you know, when I when I think about my own life and I, you know, art should do that, right? You should look at a movie like this and go, huh, I wonder what would happen to me if blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I look back on choices. I think if I would have moved to New York when I was 23 when I thought about it. The fact is I didn't make that choice. And now my life has led me here. What would have happened? Maybe I would have been here anyway. But what my life would have certainly been different had I packed all my shit in my car right. and just went to New York City. But I, I, I think you're, the key there is that's what we're going to remember because we do remember the choices. Yeah. I don't remember all the times that I had to turn left because I was in the wrong lane. Yep. Yeah. I don't remember all the times that because I went back inside to get something and then went to my car. So thus I was 30 seconds later, yeah. whatever, whatever. We don't we don't remember those because yeah. they were never, ever 
subconscious things. And yeah. that's what that's why I think this that's what this is about. The other one about choices, that's the movie or whatever you write. Yeah, I guess. Because I think it's a totally different I do. I'm just gonna say I think it's more interesting. I'm just going to it's more interesting to me that, you know, because choices are interesting. Passive characters are just, you know, eh, less Well, this, I mean, me. I don't, okay. And, and you, you know. Mean passive options because this was, it, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I think this is interesting too because, and that's why I, I, liked I liked it. it you I know. liked it. I mean, yeah. I did not like it. Um, I get what you're saying. I don't know that I say it would be more interesting. I just think it would be a different kind of interesting. And it didn't bother me when I was watching it. It just kind of occurs to me as we're sitting here talking right. about it. Right, right. Um, so, so uh, you had some fun facts that you'd compiled about this movie. Um, what was interesting was looking it up a little bit. And, and again, I was talking about how uh, John Hanna, the, the actor who plays the hero, who is wonderful. He sweet talked Sidney Pollack into helping getting funding and Sidney did a really good job uh-huh. with that. Um, but also when we're talking about and I was saying, you know, I'm sure there were some British actors, actresses yep. who could have done this aside from Gwyneth. Interestingly enough, they asked Minnie Driver huh. before Gwyneth. And I was thinking about that. I think she I think she could have nailed it, but I do think it would have been very different. It would have. But would've. I think she could have done it. She's earthier. She's a little bit more She is. Yeah. She is. Did you see Circle of Friends? I did not. It was her and Chris O'Donnell. It was an Irish movie. Okay. And uh, it was about a circle of friends, thus the title. But I don't even remember. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I went with a bunch of girlfriends, and I think we were drinking before we saw it. We enjoyed it a lot. I don't know, you know, but and it was critically acclaimed and all of that. But that's the first time I'd ever seen Minnie Driver. And she was – she's such a presence. Yeah, she really is. And I don't know. You know, you were talking about the, the, passi- the passivity – Mm-hmm. Of Gwyneth in this, in the writing, in in, in the writing, yeah. but it, of the character, I should say. And I don't know, you know, it would have been a very different character because I would have felt like she would have railed against the machine a little bit more, Maybe. or should have. I don't yeah. know. It would have been very different. Also, how what would they have done with her hair? I just don't know. Oh, they given her a cute little bob. I don't know. Still curly, but you know, whatever. I don't know. she's got a very square jaw. Um. <laughs> oh, do you watch Speechless? <laughs> No. Oh, my God. It's her series. You have to watch it. It's okay. an absolutely wonderful television show on network TV. Okay. You're telling me what I have to watch, and now I'm getting my back up. So I'm sorry. I you know that happens. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. You do it when Faye tells you. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anywho. No, Mini Driver, I absolutely adore. I think it just would have been a very different movie. Yeah. And yeah. It, and and uh, because she's a very different character. But she is British. Yeah. And I like that because I just – I don't know. Now – this po- this person was not offered it, but they were thinking about it, and okay. it was Jillian Anderson. You know her, X Files. Yeah, yeah. I I think Gwyneth is probably a better call than she feels I very like dark. Jillian Anderson. She's I. She feels very, and I don't mean this in a as, as to say less talented, because I've seen. Do you, do you ever see the House of Mirth? I've seen part of it. Okay, which is the, it's not mirthful it's at not all. Mirthy. By the way, yeah, it's not it's not a mirthful movie. Which is um, why I only saw part of it. But I'm bummed. But she and, – and also is Scully, you know, who's the skeptical yes. one. You know, yeah, she, she plays dark. removed and skeptical very but well. But she does play Americans also. She plays Americans very well. Yeah. She wasn't as Scully, but she yeah. since then has played a ser- – you talk about a British actress who's gotten a lot of work as an American. That's yeah. her. I didn't know she was British for quite a few years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I don't know that I, – I think you – I think Helen needs to be warmer. Oh, good because, one. Yes, you know because I, I because you do need to kind of hang on to her, and, and Gwyneth does have some warmth. I think Minnie I agree. has more. I agree on both those counts, and you're right. Jillian is is does come across as a little bit of a cold, yeah, fish. Well, cool, a little yeah. cool, cool. Yeah. It's not cold. It's cool. Um, now, so. And again, this we talk about how we talk, everybody talks about what ifs all the time. Sure. So the idea that this is the first movie in 1998 is a little bit absurd. Okay. So, but um, at the same time, I didn't know of any until I was <laughs> actually, and I can't. There's this 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 Polish director was in doing a, it. Was, it was an article, an interview of this Polish this female Polish director, and something about sliding doors came up, and she had a quote that said, "She said that's." Sliding Doors is just a botched copy of Blind Chance. Now, Blind Chance 
is a Polish movie that, interestingly enough, this director did not direct, mm. but she was a fan of. Okay. Blind Chance, it, it's from 1987, but it was made in 1981. So really, it's not, it's not um, what, 11 years younger. It's yeah. actually more than that. But yeah. um, so in 1981, um, a Polish film called Blind Chance was made. The reason that it took six years to get out was because of all of the censorship laws over there in Poland, mm. because this was before was it, racy? it was before the wall came down. It was like, no, it's actually I saw bits and pieces, didn't see the whole thing. Okay. But basically, it's a, a guy misses a train and instead of two different options, there are three. OK, but. Here's the deal, and this is where it really kind of veers, because at that point you're like, oh, you totally stole. Not really. This one is a bit more philosophical. Because of the time it was written, it's about the politics. Okay. So it's the idea of the movie was how chance happenings – and again, this is what we're talking about, chance, not choices. Sure. Chance happenings can change your outlook on life, on politics, on people, on everything, and your view, and thus it then – Obviously, will influence choices, mm-hmm. yep. but but because it was that kind of deep philosophical thing, I, I say, yeah, there were some concept maybe that was pulled, but it not really. And I watched some of it, and it was subtitled, obviously, and it was very much the scene I watched was these two people at a table, nothing on the table except they each had a glass of probably beer. Probably warm beer because it's there in Europe in 1980. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looked awful. And it's a drab, <laughs> you know, iron curtain-y yep. room. Yep, yep. And the camera starts behind him. He's on one side and the girl's like across from him. And then just moves slowly around the table. I mean, just dead ass slow around the table. Okay. And they're talking. The big action moment is when she took a sip. <laughs> now I'm reading, so I'm seeing what they're talking about, and it's deep. I mean, they are talking about philosophy of life. Gotcha. So I feel like that's kind of what each track was, depending on when you know what track he went, as far as missing the train or getting the train, is who he met and how he his view of life and politics changed. Uh-huh. I think in one of them I, he was became a rebel or whatever, blah blah blah, and you yeah. know so. That was a little bit different. It obviously Polish and depressing and political. 80s and political yep. and yep. blah. But it was interesting to me that this director said it was a botched copy. And I'm like, is it botched or better? Maybe, maybe we have, maybe it's lost in well, translation. Yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> if, if, if you believe that, you know, that, that deep political philosophical films are really important, then this is probably, you kind of look at sliding doors and say, well, it's a very shallow version of blind chance. Shallow and commercial. You know, um, <laughs> because really, I mean, you know, how, okay, so she missed the train and one, she, you know, caught her boyfriend earlier and the other one, she mm-hmm. kind of found out about this stuff later. Um, how was she different? Like, how was blonde Helen by the time we get, well, <laughs> aside from the obvious, um, you know, <laughs> how was blonde Helen different from brunette Helen? I mean, were they did, – did they really turn into – did all of these different experiences that resulted from that one thing about missing that train turn them into really different people? Not really different people except that I do think that blonde Helen got her confidence back got or got confidence and able to step out and go outside yeah. and stand up for herself faster than yeah. Mousy Brown did. Yeah. Although even in, even in, in blonde Helen – at first I was kind of like, OK – so the first half, the movie was half over, and I was like, so basically what we're watching is everything's going great for Blonde Helen, and everything's really just we're shitty. We're not spoiling this now. For, You're no, not going to spoil no, this. but everything's okay. going really shitty for Blonde Helen. And then there's a moment where actually something goes bad for Blonde Helen, too. You know, her, her burgeoning romance actually hits a bump. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, so they both have problems, which is interesting. Because for a while, Blonde Helen didn't have any problems, other than being out of a job. But, you know, she was blonde, she was perky, she was... <laughs> but she, she was, was a, blonde, so it was all it okay. It was all okay, because, you know, she had this great Scottish boyfriend who was telling her to open her own company. And, you know, and, and she was living rent-free with her fabulous friend. And, mm-hmm. you know, life seemed to be a lot sunnier. Uh, for Blonde Helen, and it didn't have, you know, and, and, and neither, and, you know, she didn't really have any problems. It was more interesting to me when they both had 
different troubles. They both had troubles. They were just different troubles. But I, I think don't you, think you can have a conflict-free movie. No, but I think that was part of the point is that a lot of times we sit there and we, we romanticize what could have been. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we romanticize what has been. And uh-huh. we look at back, you know, like, well, MAGA, hashtag MAGA tells you that. Make America yeah. great again. No, not really. It's actually the greatest it's ever been. So... You know, you go back there, you don't want to live back there, but we've romanticized it. And that's with, you know, choices that we make or don't make. Uh We say, oh, it would have been so great. Or if only I'd married blah, blah. Or and and that's uh, people. This is one of my pet peeves is when girls are like, oh, when I get married, it's going to. No, sweetie. (laughs) No, you won't be single anymore if that's your big problem. But it does not make everything just wonderful and and, and beautiful and smooth. You now have a different set of problems. And so that's what I think that it was good that it was for a while going just perfectly and and the the Mm -hmm. comparison was huge between the two. And you sat there and went, well, I definitely, you know, didn't want to get the – I definitely wanted to get the train kind of thing. But – uh, again, it also then sets it up for when there are bumps in the road yep. that you're like, okay, that that's real. Yeah. Because and, – and so again – But she was still having bumps in the road along the way with a guy that you wanted her to end up with as opposed to bumps in the road of a guy you just wanted her to lose. That's true. You know, so they were they – But were, it was realistic in was that realistic. people do – you get – if you don't know that he's cheating, yeah. you still believe the shit coming out of his mouth. Yeah. I mean that's just yeah. – that's where it was. Yeah. So anyway, but I, I thought there were some really good things. The best thing I thought was John Hanna. Yeah. I absolutely loved him. Thinking about it right this second, his character may have been a little too perfect – yeah. There weren't really that many flaws, and what you thought was a flaw wasn't really a flaw. It was just a, mis- a lapse in judgment. Yeah. He, he didn't tell her something that he should have, which isn't really a flaw. So I'm making a face. He didn't really, yeah, you're making a weird face. You know what you're making? A Suzanne Summers and Three's Company face. <laughs> That's exactly the face. You know that face I'm talking about? Go look it up. You YouTube it. Um, but yeah. yeah I, I, I just thought that that. That particular flaw was, to me, bad writing because that, to me, was a much bigger flaw than the movie wanted you to think it was. And I'm like, actually, that was huge. But we're supposed to let it go, so let's all just let it go collectively. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he was great. I mean, I really liked script him. aside, he was yeah. he was fantastic. But then not to put the script aside, I also – that's what I liked. I loved the dialogue. I yes. thought there were some – it was just some lovely lines. It wasn't, uh-huh. you know, fast-paced, His Girl Friday kind of stuff. Yeah. But it was very clever. Yeah. I I laughed aloud a lot. I so did say, my daughters. We didn't we didn't talk about her a whole lot, but I really loved the friend. Um, the best friend know, the was best wonderful, friend, was, was and fantastic. I wish I knew her name yeah, like the second. Yeah. But she was she was very good. We, I've seen her before, not in a thousand things. She's not uh-huh. one of those that I've seen a hundred times. Yep. But I have seen her, and I feel like I've seen her probably in a costume drama. I feel like mm. I saw her in one of those maybe Kenneth Branagh things. Mm. I don't know. But she was very good. But a lot of times, your bit characters in England are extremely good. And I, I like the character. In, in addition to the actress, I, I thought she was just she was yeah, fun. She was your basic best friend. Yeah, of the but hero, she also had a, you know she had she had a few you know kind of real moments. She wasn't just there to, for Gwyneth to bounce ideas off of. She had a point of view, and it was you know. But again, that's the way Brits tend to do it. They invest their characters with their own reality, and no yes. one's no one's ever just the sidekick. No, and nobody. I mean, their thing is that you have a bartender. That bartender's going to have a personality. I mean, the best friend of her, of the boyfriend that we talked about. Yeah. Very small part. I mean, yeah. maybe three scenes. Made an impact. Oh, my God, you remember him. And yeah. when he comes on, you are laughing your ass off because he's funny. Yeah. And he's also doing what you want to do, which is laugh at, yeah. the, at the boyfriend's pickle that he's in. <laughs> um, that he created. So, But I also thought it, was, it, it made London look really pretty. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, this, this movie could have been That a, bridge American, was gorgeous. Yes. I mean, it was just – I thought it was pretty. This, this could have been an American movie set in New York. Could have been. You totally could have done it that way, but I was. Uh, it was nice that it was London. Well, it was a British writer director, so he was going to do what he knew, which right. was London. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just you know, I, 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 I'm kind of an Anglophile. We talked about this last season. We both are. Um, I visited London twice in the past, you know, three or four years, and it's a beautiful city. It, it's fantastic so yeah it's, it's always fun to study yeah hours. i have never been there but i am a little bit of an anglophile here's what i know so i took that facebook test of it's like 
it shows you, I don't even know, maybe 50. Okay, if you took a Facebook test, you know nothing. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think that's true. Um, I believe in Facebook and all my, I don't even know where I'm going with that. Okay. But I took this one of those quizzes and, and it was, can you say who all of these British actors are? Oh my God! You aced it. Of course I did. Hundred, hundred, not ninety nine. Hundred <laughs> percent. That means that means literally nothing. That literally means nothing. Yes. It will not yes. go on my resume. But it was just very funny because I was determined. Once I got yeah. like halfway through, I'm like, "There's no way. If I miss one, I'm I'm going to be so embarrassed." You but I don't. I didn't post it anyway. Like, mm, and you're like Alan fucking. Bates. But here's the problem. Um, yeah. it, it it was actually not that difficult because they give you three choices. Oh, it's a multiple choice. Yeah, it's multiple choice. So uh, I could have done it without multiple choice. Of course. But with multiple choice, it was like, uh, if I get one wrong, I'm a fucking moron. Was John Hanna one of the pictures? He was not, See, interestingly enough. Not but Idris Elba was. Hard. I mean, they did have him. I was oh, waiting for him. Idris. I was waiting for him. I was like, okay, they have to have Idris. They have to have Idris. <sighs> they did. Okay, you said Idris Elba, so now I need a moment. Okay. Anywho, so, okay, uh, final talk in just a sec about sliding doors. Yep. We'll be back. Here's what's interesting. I've so had my moment. I had called, my interest oh moment. My Thank God. you for that. I needed that. So, um, okay, now you brought him up again. So now I have to have a moment. No, we'll go on. I'll, <laughs> I'll push through, as they say. So Sliding Doors is the title. And it was interesting how many times they were able to put some kind of sliding door around. That, yeah. Did you notice that at the very at the end, too, when they're at a hospital? Uh, John Hanna's mother is in a hospital. Uh-huh. That's one reason they're there. And and you see the sliding doors going yeah. back and forth. So I felt like that was a nice touch. Uh-huh. Uh, the, I don't remember being aware of it last time when I f- watched it the first time. So it was. I'm glad it wasn't that obvious. Mm-hmm. But I did notice it this time. Um, so... I, I don't know. Do you feel like there is – I mean, again, we already talked about it. I think that the missed moments of happen chance, we're not going to remember. Yeah. Because they happened – a hundred of them happened today. Yeah. I mean, all of these things where just life happened and, right. you know, you missed the light. Are there, or is there a choice? The You're talking about choices. Is there a choice that you think – I mean, I'm not saying to tell me what it is unless you wanted to. But, I mean, I, there are times I can think of these specific choices I made yep. that – Maybe with more information, I would have made a different choice. The big ones for me are those things that I I could have done but would have taken a lot of courage. And for whatever reason, I decided not to do that. And those are the things that I go back to and I say, gosh, what would have happened had I just Mm -hmm. done that? Um, You know, when I was in college, I was offered – I was a theater major and I was offered a summer. I I auditioned for something and I got it. And it was a uh, very low-paying but professional you know, repertory theater company role, I would have had to have waited tables the entire time that I was there just to pay bills and save up for that. And it was just a lot. It was just a, you know, mm-hmm. financially, it was not a very good choice, but professionally it could have been great. What would have happened had I done that? I had some classmates who actually went off and did it and they loved it. And, and one of them is still working professionally in it probably due to some context they made there. All those things, you know, but for me, it comes back to choices, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, if I decided to do this, how would my life have changed as opposed to, like you say, you know, I mean, I, I, I missed three red lights on the way here and it right. slowed me down. And, and what could have happened if, right. you know. And I guess my feeling about the choices and what I feel like this movie is kind of putting a period on is, and I think it can go to either choices or happenstance, more the happenstance thing, but that whatever path you're on, there are going to be good things and bad things that happen. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes what looks like it could be the perfect place and all that really isn't, it's, it's not, you know, it's not the best place so that, you know, do I think that we all are predestined or that we somehow find the perfect path no matter what? No, I don't necessarily think that, but I do think that every option is going to have its ups and downs. And sure. I guess that's what I felt like this movie kind of said was uh-huh. every option is going to have good stuff and bad stuff. Yeah. And, you know, so it's not – I guess it's 
maybe the bottom line is don't live in, in a time of regret of yeah. going, I wish yeah. or what if kind of thing. Well, and, and I won't spoil it. I promise. Stacey really doesn't want to spoil this movie. No, because I want people to see old. it. I get that. But I think I want people old. to see that. And and my daughters and them watching it, I was glad that I hadn't said anything. But I'm not going to spoil it. But I will mm-hmm. say it seems that what this one of the things this movie is saying is that if, if you're meant to break up with this person, you will eventually. If you're meant to meet this person or if your life is meant to go in this direction, it'll happen. These two lives kind of come together. Yeah, you're Not right. Really, I'm, I'm misstating that kind of no, on purpose. But, but you're right. No, I do think that's also a part of this. And and that's a part that you can believe or not believe. But I think the whole idea was to be optimistic yeah. in that if you're, you're exactly right, both of them ended up getting rid of the bad guy and that both of them ended up meeting the right guy. Yeah. So again, one was a shorter distance than the other. But there but, seems to be something that this movie is trying to say about, you know, fate will make sure that what is really meant to happen is going to happen. It just might take a little bit longer right. and I think, if you take a different path. Yeah, and I think it was an optimistic. I think it was just, yeah. it, it, because it's a romantic comedy. That's what it is. It yeah. is a rom-com, not necessarily in the kind that, you know, yeah. were churned out in, in the 90s and 2000s. But, but I it, will it say that one piece that we're not meant to talk about didn't go the way I thought it was going to. I will say that. That was I, it. Was, I was the first surprised. time I saw it, I was I was very surprised. I was but surprised. I was I and and I was surprised and had very strong feelings about it. But then I was okay. Yeah. At the beginning, you know, one of the things that when I when I rented this movie um, on uh, iTunes, I went to the iTunes mm-hmm. movie store and I, I rented it for four bucks. I own it. Um, I read the description, and the description is actually wrong. The description <laughs> said something like. When Helen misses a train, she imagines what her life is going to be. Oh yeah, like no, it's she, not. You know, she's not spending any time imagining no. this. Although there was this one moment where it was cutting back and forth between her these two paths, right? And blonde perky Helen is in the river on a boat, screaming and cheering for her for John Hanna, who's a member of a crew team, mm-hmm. and. Brown mousy Helen is on the bank saying, I knew there would be a crew team with purple and white uniforms. And I was like, what would, what? They, they had they, weird, they, would, they, would. they had weird moments like that where they, they would ha- be in the same place, you know, the same, yeah, uh-huh. you know, but at different places in yeah. that place or different, you know, places at that place yeah. with different people, which I'd like, I liked that idea that they were both going to be in that bar. Uh-huh. Now, Brown mousy was with her boyfriend. Yeah. Whereas uh, Blondie was by herself drinking yeah. herself into a pre Blondie. Pre Blondie was was there drinking herself <laughs> into a big drunk. So you know, and so they were at and John Hanna was, was at the bar both bar, times. Correct. Too. One of the times they had a conversation, the other time, the other they, time they didn't ignored her. Correct. Yeah. So I liked that kind of thing, and that happened throughout. Yeah. There was also a moment, if you recall, when um, they both got dizzy at the same time. Yes. And that has some significance, but it's it was really it was one of those where you're like, well. That's weird because it was cutting back and forth quickly uh-huh. as well. Yeah. But they're both feeling dizzy and you're like, OK. And again, it comes down to what you were talking about, that there are some things that are going to happen to this person uh-huh. no matter what path or choices they make. Yeah. And it's going to happen at a certain time yeah. in their lives. So and that's, it's interesting. Big, and I'm not a big believer in fate. You know, I don't think that certain things are meant to be no, necessarily. I can't. But I'm totally okay with that as a movie because you want movies to wrap yeah. up in a little bow, you know. And so you want this. It, Dude, it's comforting. It's a ro- romantic comedy. It better have a fucking happy ending. Yeah. I mean, well, that's just I'm, I'm, no for Stacy. It better. I yeah. told you, I read the back of the book first. There's yeah. a reason I do that. And and this, you know, but this was this one has a hopeful ending. It totally does. It's not not necessarily happy. Okay, it's not. not uh, you know what? End, I'm going to hit you, you over the head with this microphone. You keep saying shit. If you spoil this, I'm not going to spoil it. But not. But you you get the sense that everything's going to be fine. But you don't necessarily get there in this movie. You don't get to. Yeah, you don't see. You don't necessarily see the happy ending. But you do assume it. Yeah, it's bittersweet, mostly sweet. Yeah, and that's. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to say a word. Okay, yeah, final I, diagnosis. Let's mm-hmm. end this before I give away the whole true thing. True that. I think and I tell you about the aliens that come to abduct blonde Perky at the end. I of the swear movie. to God, I hate you so much. For that. <laughs> I think people should see it because I think it is it's a it's an enjoyable show. The fact that it's twenty years blows my mind. Yeah. I think that with regard to modernity and all of that, it it holds up. 
uh, you know, the cell phone, you see an old school Her cell phone with an antenna. <laughs> but aside from stuff like that, they don't get on the computer, you know, so there's none of that going on. Social media isn't mentioned. So there's that. But aside from that, um, you know, it, everything, it, it was it was fine. The characters are fine. And there's a lot of things that people are still dealing with. And that looked very much, yeah. you know, my, my girls were not taken out of the moment uh, because they're like, that doesn't exist anymore kind of thing. So, but I think it's a cute little story. I think it's a cute kind of idea concept. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was well done. I liked the people in it. And that's part of it is everybody was charming in it. It was fun to watch. And yeah. Yeah. Something I haven't really talked about in this whole thing is I really liked Gwyneth in it. She I was miss, quite good. I miss sane Gwyneth. Pre- yeah, this was back, and then that's part of it. I look at this, and I, this is how I remember her because I can't remember her now. I can't. Rem- I can't deal with her now. Yeah. Like, you know, I can't even with the goop. I can't. 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 <laughs> But you know, if you want to know why Gwyneth Paltrow was ever a big deal, this yes. is a good. This is a good. If you want to know why she had funding for her damn goop, this is how. Yeah. And but I do. I think it's this is this is a good one for her, and and but it's also for John Hanna, who has played a lot of best friends and stuff like this. He got to be the hero in this, yeah. and it was he was a, absolutely adorably charming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, good movie, good way to spend a couple hours. Mm-hmm. If if our conversation has made you I curious. Hope so. About this thing I'm not allowed to talk about, then then go see it and find out. This is Poperation. I'm Eric. I'm Stacy. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe at anywhere that does podcast stuff. Tell your friends. That'd be awesome. If you're a fan of the show, please tell your friends. That would be great. See you next time. You've been listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy, the podcast that dissects popular culture one bloody organ at a time. Subscribe today on iTunes. Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other podcast listening site or app. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Poperation Room. Check out our website at poperationroom.com for all of the podcasts, our blog, swag, and games. Until next time, when we're back in the scrubs.